Hey guys, can you hear me? Hey guys, can you hear me? Oh yes, you can. All right. <clears throat> Had a little bit of a melt up in a bunch of uh, beaten down former runners from back in 2021 yesterday. Even though the indices didn't really do much, I think Russell was, well, Russell was up actually. But the other ones didn't do much. Nope, I didn't take arc. Uh, last time my positions list was this long, probably in January, maybe not even in January, to be honest. I don't remember. Can't remember. The list of AI and quantum computing stocks that I made back in January is finally starting to pay off. These stocks are starting to run one by one. Most of them are piece of shit. But that Ionic, which I'm not long, unfortunately, that one actually has real revenues and real customers like Microsoft, Amazon and Google. They don't have a lot of revenue, but... I guess that one is one of the few legit ones. Let's see if we can get a pullback on it over the next few weeks. Because, you know, there's a bunch of quantum computing names out there, like this one, and I don't know. I guess they're shit, most of them. RGTI. RGTI got a bid yesterday, and this QBTS too. Which I'm not. All right. Good luck, guys.
really see much exciting right now. Guys, anyone in Lemonade? This one had a great DP back a month ago on earnings. Big volume. Good follow through. There's been a lot of great DPs the past month. A lot of them. Small caps, mid caps, large caps. <clears throat> Probably one of the best months since uh, November Yeah, Fubo had a great EP too. My girlfriend is both in loop in uh, Fubo and Lemonade. Both had you know high volume EPs of uh, earnings a few weeks ago. And there's been also a lot of uh, great uh, biotech ones like Legin. She's in this one. Uh, uh, she's an IMGN like me. There's so many of them. What is uh, she has? What does she have? She has ENVB, it doubled off her, almost doubled off her buy in like a few hours. She sold some and now she's trailing the rest. And you know, there's a lot of that we both have missed too. Been so, like month of May has really been great. Absolutely amazing. Everyone's still so bearish, but the debt ceiling, oh, but the banks, oh, oh, oh. What a bunch of whiners. You're sitting on your first double in EVLV? Yeah, he had an EP. I guess it was earnings EP. Yeah, 
Yeah. Wait, you see on double? That means you must have bought it in the inside of the base. ACVA was a great EP. Yeah. Well, the numbers were shit, but it worked. Volume was good. And, uh, remember, volume always trumps numbers. HTCR. Yeah, small one. Not sure what it is though. HCCR. Uh, oh yeah, earnings. But w when you get these, I'm always like, did they buy another company? Yeah, that's true. The best time to go long stocks is after a bear market and the last stages of a great bull market. And right now, I think we are in the early stages of a new bull market. We're definitely not in the late stages of a bull market, not after 2022. My thoughts on Novo Nordisk, it's a great stock to invest in, but a horrible stock to trade. Those are my thoughts on Novo Nordisk. Novo Nordisk, look at what it's done the past, I don't know, 30 years. Straight up, 48,000%. That's a compounder. It's one of the best compounders over the past couple of decades. <sighs> but you know, if you're looking to trade this stock, you should probably delete your account. Because it's like one of the slowest stocks out there. <laughs> like you, you're gonna scalp it for a, uh, 0.2% or swing trade it for a 3% move? Sure, go ahead.
Kepa short swing. Why? My girlfriend is long this one since yesterday. What a great DP. Look at the volume. It's a picture perfect DP. Took out the first five minute opening range highs. It first dipped out of the gates, started building higher lows. Took out the highs and uh, we'll see. I don't see a short there. Sound. Yeah, I bought it. Uh, well, I've been long this thing a few times this year. Uh, but you know, it's it's one of these AI names, and you know, you never know when these can things get hyped. It was, you know, it had a big run back in January. It started going in late March. Didn't have any follow through. We'll see. Because, you know, those of you who've been trading for a uh, for a while you know you know when theme stocks go they go they fucking go and they go like like in green the whole group starts moving but that was a little bit of an anticipation Qubit, good EP for a small account. Well, first of all, it's kind of hitting lows of the day, but sure, if it starts shaping up, but right now it's going down. A stock that's going down is never a good EP. You want stocks that go up, unless you're short. Would I consider APLD an EP or a parabolic short? I'm sorry, I think you need to uh, go and uh, follow instruction on the screen because like, like what, today? It's neither. And here, it was an EP but not a parabolic short. I, I don't think you understand what the difference between those are. It's definitely not a parabolic short. One, there's no parabolic here. Two, there is no two. There hasn't been many parabolic short opportunities this year, very few. One of the better ones I remember was Carvana back in January or early February. But uh, I didn't take that one because I was long the stock. I was hoping it would go to the 200 day. Carvana is starting to shape up, man, this thing. It's either bankruptcy or a five bagger. That's my thesis on it. Yeah, I'm never gonna have 30 positions again. Never ever. Too many. Do I think it's a good way? Well, Fubo was a great trade off the EP. And you know, honestly, like these types of breakouts, they haven't really been working since like November, 2021. Like, Breakouts like I, I've, uh, you know, EPs have been working fine, but breakouts I don't trust. Breakouts, 
only if it's a if it's a really like hot theme or something. But most things I do are EP related right now. CLS game, yeah, yeah. A lot of these coin related names have been pretty good the past few months. What's the new news on QBTS? There is no news. It's a sector move. It's a sector EP. The quantum, the market is waking up to the fact that, you know, AI is gonna need a lot of computing power. And, you know, there are alternatives besides Nvidia. That's the theme. You should have a list of the quantum computing stocks. I made one back in January. It's all about preparation, guys. This list, AI and quantum computing names, I made this list back in January. I, I shared it on Twitter even. All about preparation. Over the past few weeks, one by one, they're starting to wake up. Well, the breakout edge hasn't disappeared, but the thing is, you need a trending market for breakouts to work. And the problem we've had over the past, you know, even though like the queues are up, right? The spies are up. Well, actually spies have been going sideways for almost a year. The thing is we have been in range bound markets. What has been working are you either buy like you know, stocks that start rallying from a low, which I'm really bad at. Like, I don't know when I start, you know, when a stock starts rallying from a low, like, uh, you know, I don't know how to trade that. Like, how do I know when the bottom is in? I don't know. And EPs, th that's what's been working. And there's been select few stocks like Nvidia and stuff like that, you know, it had a perfect breakout, right? You know, but the very few stocks have been, you know, fueling this recent rally. And especially like small caps have been pretty much dead. Like breakouts work the best on small caps, small and mid caps in an uptrending market. We haven't had those conditions. So you have to adapt. And once we get those conditions again, you know, the classic breakout and high tight flag, etc. You know, they're going to be printing machines. You, you're going to have your own Fed in your pocket. But right now, EPs have been working better. Yeah, FTCH. I got stopped out on it on EP day and a report yesterday because it had its highest volume ever. I can't ignore that. And it came back yesterday. It dipped a little bit and it came back. QBTS also, highest volume ever. Why I sold Shopify? 
Because I had to wire money out to pay the tax man. That's why. But the good thing is, next year I won't have to pay taxman anything. Because I didn't make any money last year. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I heard about the Norwegian thing. Like I have a tax tax free Swedish account, but they're not that great at US stocks, but I'm trying to trade more. Like yeah, like RXRX another one like AI Bio had huge volume yesterday. Well, it's a thin stock still, but you know, they're waking up one by one. SDGR is also like AI bio ish kind of a name. Big move. So they're, they're you know, the speculative name, they're waking up one by one. One by one, things are starting to move higher. Damn, Palantir. Anyone else has this thing? It's a monster. Now I wish I'd bought more size. This one, that was, you know, it's really liquid. You can do like a million shares if you want to. Two million shares. Three. Nah, maybe not three. That's a bit stretch. Oh, well. Damn. Straight up. All right, not much going on. What's this coin? Coin is starting to trying to get out of its range here. Oh, see ya. Yeah.
You forgot what good EP breakout momentum even looked like? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> but here we are. The opportunity set last year was very, very slim. Unless you were day trading and making hundreds. Oh, do I hate day trading? No, not at all. Just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I hate day trading for myself. I don't hate day traders. I just hate day trading. Exactly, swing trading, especially like focus on EPs. Like for those of you who are working, you really only need like one hour of your day. You know, you start doing research, you know, 20, 30 minutes before market opens. Some days there's a lot of gappers, some days not so many. And then, you know, market opens up and you, you see what's good. You'll find some new ones that you didn't find in your pre-market scans and you know first 30 minutes you're gonna make your entries and then you're free it takes one hour of your day call back in december wait which is this one? Oh yeah i remember trading that one i think i both traded long and short I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember this one. I was shorting it on this day here, 30th of December. I think I took a loss on it. Oh, I don't remember which day. Or was it this day? No, 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 wait, wait. 4th of January, maybe. I don't remember. I think I got squeezed on it. Anyhow. <clears throat> No, I use the 60 minute and five minute or two, but yeah, I don't, it's just so much cleaner just looking at the daily. And if you see it's something interesting, you know, I look at the monthly or weekly or whatever, five, depends on what I'm looking at. Exactly, in day trading, you're constantly fighting near your entry. That's what I hate. You have to monitor your positions constantly. And you always have to wait for new entry, or like look for new entries, right? But the way I trade, most of the opportunities, gonna, you, you're going to get it in the first hour, even in the first 30 minutes usually. Like most of my trading happens in the first, say, 30, 45 minutes. Probably like 70, 80%.
happens in the first, I don't know, 10, 15% of the trading day. All right, guys, I'm going to cut the stream. I'm not going to stream for until maybe late uh, next week. I'm going to be traveling. Uh, I'm going to visit Norway. I'm going to go to the Monaco uh, Grand Prix. And uh, yeah, probably in late next week, I'll, um, I'll stream again. So um, have a great time guys hope you make a lot of profit and um, see ya